Okay, so here we have the version 2 theremin wired up and ready to go with all functionality complete. We have the key, 12 keys, the scale, 5 scales, major, minor, pentatonic major, pentatonic minor, and gypsy. We have the octave, there are 5 selections there. Then the waveform, sine, sawtooth, square, and then a mode switch which currently has five modes. One is regular digital theremin, one is analog theremin, and then there are three random modes. Volume, power, audio output, and then the, uh, the unit can be powered via battery, or there is a power adapter in the back. You can attach, if you attach a power adapter, the battery is disconnected, so you can leave the battery in there all the time. So there's the digital pentatonic, or digital theremin. In this case, it's in the major scale. And of course, you can switch to a different key. You can switch to a different scale. So there is the minor A scale. And here is a pentatonic major scale. Pentatonic minor. And the gypsy scale. And the octave goes down to here. Up to here. And then, of course, you have the sawtooth. The square wave. Back to the sine wave. This is the analog theremin. Now, of course, the scale, octave, and key don't affect the analog theremin. This is its range. And then the first random mode gives you close changes. The next one Ooh, let me look at the notes again real quick. Ah, okay. So, the first random mode gives you notes that are far away. So the jumps are at least three notes away from the current note. Now this is affected by the scale and the key. And the second mode, random mode, does notes that are closer together. So these notes are all within one to three notes of the current note. So it doesn't sound like it jumps around as much as the first one. The last mode is within the first six notes of the current note. So it can jump around far or close. And of course, in all of these modes, waveform, 
octave, key, and scale are all effective. And then the volume affects everything. Now one of the things that you'll need to know about this sensor is that it just detects a general idea of where your hand is. If you come in from the side, it will view it as though it's further away. And so there's no real way to get a nice note cut off. It's as though you're pulling your hand away here. You have the same effect as you move it away from the side. So just something to note about this particular sensor. And there is a cutoff about two inches away. It only lasts for about a half inch and then the sensor starts detecting something different than what it should be detecting. So you want to stay at least an inch away from it otherwise you'll start getting some something as though you're playing up here. And that's that.